Okay, in transcription and translation, before we jump into the nitty gritty details, let's look at just some of the, just the basic vocabulary. Actually, this is good enough for standard level understanding of the vocabulary and how it all kind of fits together. Uh, the previous videos, we talked about the overall central dogma of biology, and it involves DNA going to being transcribed into RNA, and then that RNA being translated into a sequence of amino acids which will fold into a protein and have a specific function. So here you have your DNA molecule, basically, and your DNA molecule is a double helix, and it's DNA, not RNA, and you have a little molecule that's going to be moving along here, and as this, as this molecule moves along, this is actually moving towards the left. The name of this molecule is called um, well, it's polymerase. If you think of polymerase as ASC tells you it's an enzyme, ASE, polymerase, and it sounds like it's trying to make a big molecule, a polymer. So it's actually creating a string of nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, which will help to build this long chain, and we call this uh, RNA. Specifically, we're going to call it M RNA, which stands for messenger RNA. And the enzyme that helps to build this messenger RNA molecule while simultaneously unwinding this DNA temporarily to make this is just called RNA polymerase. It unzips the DNA and adds bases to a growing RNA chain. And the code here, for now, it's just a string of letters, but this string of letters actually codes for something. And every three of these letters will eventually be translated into an amino acid. So every three of these we actually call a codon. So that's what it physically looks like on the DNA. And this process we're looking at up here, what is described in this diagram, is called transcription. And that's the first half of the central dogma. Once we have the mRNA, as we've mentioned in the previous videos, uh, the mRNA contains a, a sequence which is an which is a copy of a particular gene in the DNA. And the entire DNA molecule did not get transcribed, just the relevant part for making a particular protein. So we're really talking about a gene being transcribed and translated into a protein. And so this mRNA will be a copy of that gene and will contain just the right sequence of letters. So let's see what happens when we come down here. So in this diagram below, uh, here is the mRNA. Uh, molecule, which is just long enough to be able to to contain all the instructions for one particular gene here. And I can already see in mRNA that, it, well, first of all, this is single-stranded, and the bases that are in here should be A, not T, it should be A, U, C, and G. So that's why I only see A's, U's, and C's and G's here. Um, how did I get this sequence? Remember back up here, it was derived by matching complementary bases for a particular sequence on the DNA molecule. So there is something coded for in here. And we did say every three of these uh, is called a codon, and that's going to code for something important. Here is our mRNA molecule, which stands for messenger RNA. And so where does this mRNA actually get converted? So down here I can see eventually this is going to turn into a, a sequence of amino acids. So here we are translating the mRNA into uh, a protein. And proteins are just chains of, um, of specific amino acids. And the place that we go is the place that you've learned about in basic biology 101 cell biology, which is uh, the place that proteins are made. And proteins are made by ribosome. So this is a ribosome. Now, in higher level details, we're going to learn about, you know, different parts of the ribosome, uh, how these particular molecules interact. But like I said, this is just the basic overview. So if you understand this, that's great, then you can move on. If you don't understand this, then don't move on. Uh, check out somebody else's videos or rewatch re this over and over again. Um, or post a question. Here is some pretty interesting stuff that actually happens. I need to get this codon and turn it into an amino acid. And so what happens is you have these other molecules that are helping as a mediator, and the ribosome is kind of the place where everybody meets, okay? So the ribosome is the factory, and of course the factory needs some instructions, so the instructions get fed through, kind of like a, a typewriter here. And the ribosome is, it has all these little parking spots set up, so it goes and as it moves through, uh, a codon sits there, 
and it gets lined up and then so what we have to do is we have to line up that codon with uh, another molecule that's going to bring the correct amino acid that codes uh, that is coded for by this particular codon so every three letters is a codon one codon will bring will code for one amino acid so this molecule that's helping out here is another piece of RNA this is folded RNA this is just a simplified diagram but it's RNA but to distinguish it from the original messenger RNA we call it tRNA and the T is short for transfer RNA. So this is kind of transferring an amino acid over here. And the way that this matches up is the codon actually matches with two, excuse me. Codon actually matches with an anticodon. And the anticodon are three letters that are complementary to uh, the codon. So check it out. This is just like in DNA, but it's not DNA. So C normally binds with G, right? A would normally bind with, in DNA would be T, but there's no T's in RNA, and both of these are RNA, so A will bind with U, and that means U will actually bind with A. So a transfer RNA molecule actually brings an amino acid with it. Oops, I'm losing my mouse function here. Oh, here we go. It actually brings the correct amino acid over, and it's going to line it up, and as this uh, mRNA is fed through the ribosome, uh, the next tRNA is going to come in, it's going to drop off its amino acid, then it's going to keep on going. So if you can imagine, there's lots of videos that are animating this, but you, you can look for that later. So as these tRNA molecules come in and drop off the next amino acid, this chain of amino acids grows longer and longer and longer. So that's an amino acid being brought in. And eventually this chain of amino acids will fold. And if you're doing higher level, you're going to learn about protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary levels, and you're going to see just how important this specific sequence is. Because from here, it will figure out how it's supposed to fold and what its three-dimensional shape is it's, it, it's going to attain and therefore what its properties are going to be. Because remember, that enzyme is just a protein, uh, which is made up of a chain of amino acids. And... That enzyme has an active site. The active site is all three-dimensional and it's all related to the sequence of amino acids. So that's pretty powerful. All this stuff in the DNA, all the genes, are turned into molecules that do things in our body. And enzymes are one of the most important. Of course, hormones, antibodies, these are all things that are coded for in our DNA and brought literally to life uh, by this process of transcription to make the copy of the gene and then translation to actually turn the gene into a protein that does something. And so this whole process down here is called translation. That's the standard level version of everything. Uh, in subsequent videos, we're going to jump into transcription in a lot more detail and translation in so much more detail. I'm hurting thinking about it. All right, let's not get sad. If you have any questions, please let me know on Edmodo or wherever else you want to let me know. Okay, have a fantastic day, everybody. How do I stop this? What button do I press? Like this. I think it's like this. Oh. I don't know how to stop this video. Oh my goodness. What is the keyboard shortcut to stop? Oh, oh. Oh, that wasn't it.